In part one, Cheryl Atkinson talked about her investigative story on a government-funded study of premature babies that failed to inform parents of all the risks. I think one of the most surprising things was when I learned that the researchers, as part of the research, had intentionally worked to disable the oxygen monitors so that they would give basically false readings so that the medical personnel wouldn't know if the babies needed to be adjusted into a better oxygen range based on the individual baby's health. Now on The Daily Signal, she discusses the government's role in policing ethics in research and why enforcement in this case stalled. The federal government funded the study, basically approved the study, oversaw the study. This was the National Institutes of Health under HHS study conducted at about 24 research institutions, very prestigious ones, each of which approved individually separate consent forms for the study. So Duke said it was okay. Wake Forest said it was okay. University of Alabama said it was okay. How could so many of these research institutions and the federal government found that the consent form for this study, which didn't disclose increased risk of death that occurred and didn't disclose many other things, how did that slip through the cracks if the government's own ethics body said the consent process was lacking? That's a huge question. So would you argue that the federal government failed to do its job here? I think it's clear that the federal government, at, le at the very least, made a mistake in funding a study and letting it go through to its conclusion that in which the consent process by its own acknowledgement of the ethics office was deficient, that resulted in the deaths, unnecessary deaths of some babies, that resulted in the blindness of other babies. Um, that's a huge issue and perhaps one of the most important cases since the Tuskegee syphilis experiments, which first raised the idea of what human test subjects must be told about the experiments that are being done on them. So is there a tension between the doctors and the medical personnel pursuing this experiment? I spoke to a researcher who was not involved in this particular study who cautioned that there is so much pressure on researchers to advance their own research, make a name for themselves in the world, that it can be very tempting to try to downplay risks and dangers of studies so that you can recruit those test subjects that you need. Who is going to sign their critically ill premature baby up for a study if you tell them there's going to be an increased risk of death or an increased risk of blindness? So some researchers argue, how can we do these important studies if we say all of these things? But some ethicists then argue back, maybe those studies just shouldn't be done. And what do you hope the federal response will be? Right now, the federal response is fairly stalled. And according to ethicists who are watching this, that's because of pressure by the research community and by senior officials in the federal government who really uh, didn't want this to go much further. Uh, what should be done is the ethics body that investigated should be allowed to independently do its job. I think there should be a finding, which is now on hold, of some sort of action, whether you call it punishment or um, any sort of solution. There needs to be something that's said at the end of all this. What did the researchers do wrong? What do they need to do to correct this and make sure the same type of thing doesn't happen again? For more on this story, go to thedailysignal.com.